Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at gates inside Laravel. Uh, it's a way to define permissions and do basic rule validation slash authorization in your applications. So let's get started. On the previous episode, we created our admin page and we used a simple middleware. So if we use the middleware uh, technique, we created this ensure user is admin middleware. We did a simple check and we basically aborted the request. We redirected the user. Uh, with a 403 response if they were not an admin, right? And it's a good solution. You can use it on simple applications or even medium-sized applications. However, Laravel does provide an alternative solution to this using gates, and it allows us to define not only roles, but also permissions, right? So our uh, middleware is a little bit hard to define permissions with it. So let's go ahead and see gates work in action. So the first step is you need to actually create some gates and you create your gates by going inside your app folder, inside the providers uh, folder, and then under auth service provider, right? Now, I still haven't covered service provider, so I'm not going to go too in-depth into it. But basically, know that you need to go inside your auth service provider under boot method. So this is basically where you define your gates. And for now, you can think of gates as basically either a permission or a simple uh, role, okay? So let's first go ahead and see how we can use it as a role. So first you need to create a gate. So you can go ahead and use a gate class or it's basically a facade under illuminate support facades. So go ahead and import that and then call in a method of define, which is used to create a gate. So the first argument is going to be your gate name. So we can give it a role based name such as admin, or you can say, for example, a view idea, right? Both of these are possible. We can name it whatever you like. Uh, you can even have, you know, view idea. It's up to you what kind of name you give it. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and say admin. And basically, this gate is going to check if the user is authorized to view an admin page or do or act as an admin. And then as a second argument, you need to pass it in a closure or basically an anonymous function. And this anonymous function accepts, uh, you can have at least has one argument, which is going to be the logged in user or the user you want to check has access to this gate. So it's going to be a class of type user, and then that's it. And it's going to return basically a Boolean, right? So that's going to be the return type. So here you can go ahead and do your logic or conditional and check if the user is logged in or not, right? So in our case, I'm going to say user, and then we already have the logic inside our middleware. Basically, we need to check if the is admin is one or not, right? So is admin is going to be either zero or one. If it's one, then the user is an admin. So I'm going to go ahead and use this here and basically return this, right? So by default, uh, obviously, because it's a Boolean, we don't need to do any if statements. And I can just go ahead and cast it as a Boolean just to be safe. And basically, we have already defined our first gate. So now that we have this gate, guys, we can go ahead and use it to authorize or check if the user is you know, an admin or not, right? So. To test it out, I'm going to go ahead and actually uh, inside our admin route, get rid of this admin middleware, right? Our previous solution. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and delete our uh, ensure admin middleware as well. So we know it's not doing anything anymore. So I'll go ahead and I delete it here. And I'm also going to delete it from our uh, kernel here, right? Kernel.php. So let me search for it, kernel. So it's going to be kernel.php, and then we were defining it over here, right? So we had an alias for it. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it from here as well. So now if I go and I open up the admin page, it should still look the same. If I log out and I go ahead and I try to access it with a non-admin user, so it's going to be this Alex account. So Alex isn't an admin. So if I manually go ahead and I open up the admin page, I'm able to view it. So let's go ahead and now do the exact same check we did using gates. So there are a few ways you can do it. The easiest way is, or, the, or one way is you can do it inside the controller. So we can go ahead and open up our uh, admin dashboard controller. I have it open over here. And we can actually do the check inside our controller methods. And sometimes you may want to do it. So in this case, you can go ahead and do a simple if statement and access the gate facade again. So the same import. And then say uh, allows whatever your gate name is, right? So in our case, if I open up the auth uh, service provider, our gate name was admin. So I can go ahead and say allows admin. And then obviously we want the opposite of this. If the user isn't allowed to access the admin, so I'm going to add this. 
if that is the case, go ahead and abort with, let's say, 403, right? Or you can go ahead and redirect the user, whatever you like to do in that case. So this is going to basically achieve the same thing we did in our on the previous episode. So if I go ahead and I reload the page, now we get this forbidden. Now, this is useful. However, this can be annoying because you have to do it on every single route. So there is a shortcut for this. I'll show you guys in a second. Now, this allows, if you'd like, you can also go ahead and say uh, denies. And basically, it's the opposite of allows. And it's going to do the exact same thing as we did before. Now, there is another shortcut as well for this. If you don't like the syntax, you can actually go ahead and say this. So it's part of this controller and say authorize admin, right? So inside this authorize, you need to pass in a gate name. So this is a shorthand for version. I really like this syntax because it's very easy to read. Even if someone is not uh, familiar with Laravel, they kind of know immediately, okay, this ensures the user, you know, is an admin or has this specific permission. So you can go ahead and use this uh, syntax as well, this authorize. And again, if I reload, it still works, right? So now that I have covered this, guys, you can actually uh, go ahead. There is a way to define these inside your routes as well. So you don't have to def uh, add it to every single method on your controllers. So the way this is done, so I'll remove it from here and I do a reload. So we are again able to access the admin page. There is a middleware named, named can. So if I open up the kernel.php, it's over here. So this authorized middleware. So this middleware can actually be used to check against a specific gate, right? So it's an easy way to do it. So you can go to any of your routes you want to check against the gate and then give it this new can middleware. So you can say can and then pass it in a double colon and then pass in a gate name. So it will check if the user has access to that gate. And if they don't, it will basically, you know, do the 403 response. So here I can say can admin, okay? And that's all I have to do. So if I go ahead and I reload now, I'm not able to access it again. So this is basically a way of defining uh, your gate authorizations inside the middle, inside your routes. So you don't have to do it inside your dash contro controllers, right? So in this case, we don't have to do it inside our dashboard controller because we have it on our routes. And this is generally how I do it for rule-based gates, right? But in some cases, you want to have maybe uh, permissions, right? So let me show you guys an example of a permission, right? So I'll go back. So one permission we have on our current application is the ability to edit or delete an idea, right? So in our case right now, we have a permission, basically only the owner of an idea has the ability to edit or delete basically their own idea, right? And to achieve this, we are doing a simple if statement. So let me open up our idea controller. So if you guys remember, uh, we had these methods of destroy, edit and update and to prevent the basically unauthorized users for deleting or destroying some someone else's ideas we were doing this simple check right so we were basically checking if the logged in user wasn't same as the owner of an idea we were aborting right and the solution does work however it can be a little bit annoying and it's also hard to scale you do have a lot of duplicate code so what we can do is we can actually go ahead and use gates in this instance right so let's go ahead and do that i'm going to go ahead and open up our uh, auth service provider so what we covered now was basically like a role uh, based gate. We can do exactly, we can also use it as a permission. So I'm going to say permission. So here I'm going to say, uh, let's say delete idea. Now different people have different uh, formats of how they define their, their basically permissions. Some people do it this way, delete idea, delete, let's say comment. Some people do it the other way around. They do idea, uh, delete. View. I have seen both of them. Some people like to use a dash in between. It's up to you which one you use. Just be consistent again throughout all your kind of permission names. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and say idea delete. And I'm going to go ahead and define another one for idea edit. Okay. Now, see, in this case, because we are checking if the user has access to a specific idea, we also need to get that idea we're checking. So we can do that very easily with gates by adding a new argument. So this can be any model type. In this case, I'm going to say idea. And by the way, guys, you don't need to actually add these types in PHP. I'm just adding them, uh, you know, for extra safety. So I'm going to go ahead here. And it's also obvious, you know, what model we're working with. So in this case, I'm going to say only the admin and the owner has the ability to delete. So I'm going to go ahead and do a simple if statement. So I'm going to say if the user is an admin, they can delete. Or if they are the owner of 
this idea. So here I can say user.id is equal to idea user ID, right? So only admin or uh, the owner can check. You can maybe go move this uh, into a, maybe a function on the model or the idea if you would like. I'll just do it over here. It should be fine. I'm going to do the exact same thing for our idea edit as well. Now you can have the exact same permission for these two as well, if you like, like manages idea, something like that. But for now, I think this should be enough. Let's go ahead and up, also update this. So now we have two permissions, one for deleting an idea and one for editing an idea. And what we can do is we can get rid of these existing methods we had over here, guys. Okay. So I'll go ahead and for now, actually, I'll go ahead and I'll comment these. Or I can maybe delete the entire thing. So I still haven't saved the file. So if I go ahead, this is my my own idea. If I go ahead and I view someone else's idea, such as this this one, and I manually go to the edit page by updating the URL, I get not found, right? But if I go ahead and save the file because we deleted all these uh, basically authorization code, if I reload again, now I'm able to actually view it, right? So let's go ahead and see how we can fix it using gates. Basically, we can go ahead and say this, authorize this method that I showed you guys or any of the other ways I showed you. And then here say idea, delete, right? So this is basically uh, the gate name we defined, idea delete. And then because for these gates, we need to pass it in the idea as well, right? We are accepting an, an extra argument. We can go ahead and pass in the idea model to it. And that's all we have to do guys. So basically it's very easy to read, authorize, can delete an idea, right? We can also go ahead and use can. It's also, you know, the naming is up to you. I'll go ahead and I'll do the exact same thing for uh, edit as well. And I'll also need to put it inside update because these two are tied together, okay? And that's all we have to do, guys. I'm going to save the file. I'll come over here and I, I reload again. And now we get a 403. This action is unauthorized. Just like this, very easy to do. And of course, if I go ahead and I try it with my own ideas, I'm able to view it. Now, if you guys remember also in the gate, I also said if the user is an admin, so let me log out and log in as an admin. So I'll log out and uh, I log in as one of the admins, which is this test account. So what I can do is I can go ahead and obviously the admin is this test user. So I'll go ahead for this user, which is not mine. If I click on view and I try to access the edit page, I'm able to see it because I'm an admin, right? So the admins also have the ability to edit and delete. So this is basically how you guys uh, can create gates and also use them inside your controllers or inside the middleware. Now, you can also do use gates inside your uh, Blade files if you guys would like. So uh, let's go ahead and, for example, check out our idea card here. I'm, if you guys uh, noticed, there was an edit button, right? So for my own ideas, I have this edit and delete button. But for other people's ideas, I don't, right? And I'm doing a simple if statement check to achieve that, right? We can go ahead and use actually some blade directives and use our gates to do it. So let me show you guys how that would work. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the blade file responsible for rendering this uh, card. So it's, I believe it's called idea card. And if you actually pay attention over here, I'm doing a very, uh, you know, simple if statement, right? So what I'm doing is I'm saying if the logged in user is basically the same as the owner of this idea, go ahead and display the edit button as well as the delete button, right? So what you can do here is instead of doing this if, we can go ahead and use a blade directive called can and say can and basically uh, VS Code has already done it for me, but basically you need to do end can after, after it. It's like an if statement. And then this first argument is going to your, be your permission name. So in this case, for us, it is uh, edit or delete. In this case, both of these are exactly identical. So if you, these, these were different, maybe they had different conditions. Uh, you could have two cans, but in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and say can uh, idea dot edit. And then the second argument is going to be basically whatever extra arguments you're passing in, right? In this case, it's going to be our idea. So I'm going to go ahead and say idea, this variable over here. All right, and I'll save it. And if I reload, uh, as you can see, it's still working. And I'm also, because I added this, uh, I'm also able to see other people's uh, delete and edit buttons because I'm an admin, right? So if I log out and I log in as a regular user or as a non-admin, I'm no longer able to see it, for example, for this test user, but I'm able to see the edit for my own account. 
So basically, you can use this uh, can inside your blade files as well, as well as inside your controllers, as well as inside your route files. So that's the basics of gates inside Laravel. Now, there is a little bit more to it as well, but this is the very basics of it, guys, and it should be enough to get you up and running. Now, there are some limitations with gates. First of all, it's a bit as your application scales. It's going to be a little bit hard to manage all of these. So Laravel does have another uh, solution for this using policies. I will try to cover that on a different videos. But for simple applications, if you just have like one or two roles, let's say admin, uh, let's say editor, like two, three roles, and then maybe one or two permissions, gates are very easy to work and you can just use them in, a, you know, define them in a couple of minutes and use them throughout your applications. So for simple applications, I think it's a very good uh, thing to use. But for more, more complex application, you probably need to use a combination of gates, policies, and maybe some other stuff, okay? So if you guys have any questions, you can la leave it in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like the video and subscribe uh, if you still haven't and you're new to the channel. And I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.